You're trying to be patient with your kids. You're trying to be kind. You are trying to use those gentle parenting techniques and it's just not working. Stop it. Get some help. We've got ideas. Mended light. <laughs> So you can learn all the skills, all the techniques from the podcasts, the books, from YouTube videos. And if you are not in a place of peace and calm and love, and you do not feel emotionally regulated, it's not going to matter. Yep. It's not going to move the needle until you heal your own heart. But how? 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 And of course, you want to break the generational cycles and give your kids the safety and security that they need and that possibly you never had. But to give your kids what you never had, you first got to give it to yourself. You know, our close relationships with our parents, our partners, our siblings, our children, they are going to expose the wounds that we have. At times, they are going to trigger us in all of our unhealed places. And we can look at those experiences as a beautiful symbiotic relationship that shines a light on a personal growth opportunity, or we can blame the person or experience for exposing a wound and also blame them for the discomfort. The beautiful part is you get to choose. And again, to give our kids what we never had, we first have to give it to ourselves because we're trying to help our kids. You're trying to help your kids learn to regulate their emotions. But something that they say or do is going to bump up against an unresolved wound of yours. And then you're going to struggle to regulate your own emotions. And so what happens in my experience is I try to be patient and I try to be calm. But when that wound that's unresolved from my life gets rubbed up against in a bad way, in a painful way, in a parenting situation, I respond to the wound itself and not just what's going on in that moment. So small things become big things. And in order to keep small things from becoming big things, if you've ever felt like your reaction after the fact, you're like, that was big. Well, that's because there's something there and you have to resolve it. You have to heal it so that you can just be mindfully present in the moment instead of bringing in all your baggage with you, which reminds me, we both got examples to share about this. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, this was, this was years ago. I think I had four little kids. I don't think there was quite five yet. I could be wrong. It gets hazy. It's daily <laughs> there. Um, but, but I definitely had four small children and a business and I was exhausted, right? Um, so a newborn and a two-year-old and a four-year-old and an eight-year-old. And I remember so clearly, have you ever had those moments where you just vividly remember it? Like it was a movie playing out in front of you. Um, I remember so vividly standing in the hallway in between two children's bedrooms, right? And my bedroom was down at the end of the hallway and I was yelling at them. And I was so, so angry because (laughs) their rooms were immense. Life felt chaotic. They wouldn't pick up after themselves um, to the level that they were capable of. You know, everything was a disaster. And I I paused because I wasn't very far into my yelling. Um, and I had just like this lightning bolt realization that it's true. Like I do want my children to clean up after themselves um, to the and to an age appropriate level right? And they are capable of picking up their dirty clothes and putting them in the dirty clothes instead of leaving them on the floor. Mm. But the chaos that I felt and the anger that I felt had nothing to do with their behavior. And it had everything to do with the fact that I felt my life was chaotic and felt like my life was out of control. And what I couldn't handle was the chaos and out of controlness. Uh, I felt like their choices were adding to the situation. Mm. And with that lightning bolt realization, I thought, hey, I've, I've got to help myself. I need to get myself some support. And after I feel like I have help and support, like I will come back to this conversation and really just the overall expectation of like how I needed them to show up in, in an age appropriate way, right? Like I wasn't expecting them right. to fix the chaos or to not be children. Um, but I realized that 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 expectation that I had for my children and their role in cleaning up after themselves 
I couldn't handle it in a healthy way with the chaos that I currently felt. And so that was something that I just put on the back burner. Um, and as a type A well, on the back burner, you're like, you don't have, we're not going to worry about your rooms for a few months, which yeah. is huge. Yeah. It's a big deal for real. No, I and, didn't mean that. That's no, right. Like, true. so you're a type like, A personality for you to let that go is a big deal. It's like a big deal. But I realized that I wasn't interacting with this expectation in a healthy way. And it wasn't something that I was going to be able to solve in my own life overnight or even within a week. Right. Right. And so I'm like, okay, that's going on the back burner. They need some support that they're not getting. They have too much stuff. They're actually not capable of keeping that much stuff picked up at their current age. Like I need to go through, simplify their life. But before I could even do that and go through and simplify their life and then have healthier expectations, I was like, I have way too much out of balance in my own life. I need to do this for myself first. Yeah. And and that's an example of like the circumstances creating something where the parent's overwhelmed and the parent doesn't know what to do and the parent needs some support, right? right? And I can't tell you how many times I've been in that place as a parent that's stressed with a career, a job, school, all the adulting things, right? Bill, and, yeah. yeah, and you're trying to show up and you're trying to be there for your kids and you're trying to be patient when the reality is like your nerves are shot, you know? And then they're just acting like children because children do that all the time. They act like children. Uh, <laughs> and you're like, do you have no consideration? This isn't that hard. Try living my life. You know, like like every parent can relate to that, right? You don't know what pain is like. <laughs> you don't know what art is. Sometimes our kids say to me, I'm just so overwhelmed right now <laughs> and i don't want to invalidate that but their experience by being like you don't even know what overwhelmed is right well because at their level they are overweight they are right they sure are right and so how often are we trying to give something to our children that we don't have ourselves how often are we trying to give them support when we're doing that not from a disingenuine place not because we don't care but because we care so much right, right. And so when you're trying to put on that happy face, when you're trying to pretend, when you're trying to speak nicely through your gritted teeth, right? Like take a couple steps back and say, okay, what, because the goal of relationships is real love. The goal of relationships is unconditional love, right? And if you cannot operate from a place of love and love doesn't always mean saying, you know, sickly, sweet, nice things, like- <laughs> <laughs> like love is holding people accountable, right? But it's like, if you don't have love in your heart, if you don't have peace in your heart and you're trying to apply gentle parenting, it's not going to work, right? Yeah. Because that that anger and that frustration and that overwhelm and that chaos, it grows. And that's such a real human experience. And so keep in mind, even with your children, before you give something to them, you need to have it within yourself and for yourself. Damn. Damn! My wounds, which I'm carried around for most of my life, go back to me being bullied for about a decade during my, I mean, they're called formative years for a reason. They're foundational. They're important. And I, in, and I developed a lot of beliefs about myself that I was unworthy of love, that I was unwanted, that I didn't belong. Because I existed socially to be mocked. I existed socially to be tormented. And I existed for others to bond and join and connect over making me cry. Uh, it was rough. And I've carried with me a, a deep-seated belief in my own unworthiness and that I have to pretend. I have to act. I have to show up a certain way so people will like me. So you see something that that I think is helpful and applicable to for all of us that are human. Um <laughs> Be careful that your subjective subject. Be careful that your subject. <laughs> what, bro? What are you talking about, man? Be careful that your subjective perception does not become objective reality. And why that's important is because there are there is truth in the world with a little t, and there's truth in the world with a big t. And I call the little t truth our subjective perception and big t truth is objective reality so so your subjective 
perception was that the reason that you existed was to be teased and tormented and to bring other people together yeah. by bonding over you bullying me over bullying you yeah. which isn't true like that was that was never objectively true right but it was true to you and so it was the reality in which you interacted correct in your life yeah and we, we all have those experiences we all have those judgments or conclusions that we come to about our perception but we don't think it's our perception we think it's reality yeah absolutely and the traumas of our childhood or in my case i call them like or traumas like yeah only maybe one or two of the events would i call actually traumatic in and of itself but compounded over time they all added up and and they they fed into that perception and, and we and we carry that deep within us and we work through it. we can accept different ideas rationally up here but way down deep, those beliefs are still there. and On a core feeling, emotional level. And so when we talk about things that are unhealed, yeah, we have a son who personality-wise reminds me a lot of my childhood bullies. Yeah, He's got a real sweet side and a real sincere side and a real loving side. But he also likes to tease and taunt and torment and lead with aggression and lead with anger and provoke and... And yeah, his his love language is teasing. And unless you have another person whose love language is teasing, mm -hmm. it just is rude and obnoxious and yeah. disrespectful. Oh, he's a he, lot of the time. He's also pretty defiant because he has a very strong will and wants what he wants. So what this looks like when it comes to gentle parenting is I will show up as myself and as politely and respectfully mm -hmm. because that's what I do in life. And that's how I treat people. And with, for example, our daughter. That works like a charm. Yeah. But with him, I'm polite, I'm respectful, I'm calm, and it's like it's like perceived as weakness or something to well, he dad doesn't mean it because he's not angry yet, right? <laughs> or or maybe but what happens is I go and I go and I go and then I feel disrespected and it brings up the wounds of my childhood. I feel like I'm being provoked and tormented like I was when I was a kid, except for now I'm the authority figure, now I'm an adult, and the the emotion is I'll be damned if I'm going to go through this again, especially as an adult. And then my reactions can be big and angry. Yeah, because, because you're not responding to what is just happening in the moment. Right. You're responding to every other experience that you've had where you felt a similar way. Right, which is why the wound thing is so accurate, yeah. because if I have, if I have an injury... A doctor's going to press around and find where it's tender, right? And where it's tender is where the injury is. So we have these big reactions. And what I had to do in order to interact with my son lovingly but firmly and without going big because of all of this baggage is I had to unpack the baggage and resolve it. I had to, I had to come to a place of knowing that I'm loved, knowing that I belong, knowing that I'm worthy, knowing that my childhood bullies weren't right. And knowing that my existence isn't to be tormented, is to be loved and to give love. And when I came to accept that, then I could interact with him presently in the moment and just respond to what's happening, not all of the pain that it's bringing up. Well, and I love the two different experiences that we're able to share mm -hmm. because they're both a very relatable example of being triggered by people that we love, but different ways, right? Um, and I think that both of those things are something that everyone can relate to. We can all relate to feeling like our life is overwhelming or out of control and something happens and it's the straw that breaks the camel's back and we lash out. Or someone treats us poorly, um, justifiably poorly, and we respond in such a big way. Um, and that's not to justify the responding in a big way, but to understand, oh, I'm not responding to just what's happening in the moment. I'm responding to every single thing that's emotionally tied to what's happening in the moment. And it took you years to realize that this is what was going on for you yeah. in those interactions. And I have hundreds of examples that I could share where it took me maybe decades <laughs> to be like, Oh, this is why this is upsetting. And a lot of times when we experience a trigger, we just want it to go away. We just want to stop feeling. And so we tend to react big because we want to stop it. Well, I mean, it's fight, flight, or freeze. Right. right. Yeah. We, we either fight, we either shut down, uh, we numb. And that's where, you know, we can't selectively numb, right? Right. But it's like, oh, I want to get to this place where I just stop feeling because I don't know how to not be triggered. 
while that interaction that's shining a light on the wound is actually there to support us mm -hmm. if we have the tools or if we know how to feel through those emotions in a supportive way. And does that mean that we don't parent or we don't interact with other people until we're completely healed and we're in this complete whole place where we're never triggered or we're never reactive or we never lose our cool again? No. <laughs> <laughs> what it means is that we own the process yeah. and when we make mistakes along the way, all that is is an opportunity to model accountability yeah. and to take ownership and to make amends. And that's as powerful and beautiful or even more so than getting it right all the time. Oh, way more powerful and way more beautiful than getting it right, quote unquote, all the time. Because I would say our our perception of getting it right is to do things without flaw. Um, and I would say the true definition of getting it right or success or even perfection is to move through those challenging experiences with compassion and grace and forgiveness and seeing ourselves as a whole person. It isn't to avoid the discomfort. Um, but that is a, that's a huge talking about perception. That's a huge perception shift yeah. from, oh, I've succeeded if I'm never triggered or I'm, I've succeeded if I've never lost my cool to, oh, I've succeeded every single time I repair or I've succeeded every single time that I seek compassion and I offer compassion to other people, right? And so if that's something you struggle with, I would I would challenge you to uh, to redefine uh, your definition of success or mm -hmm. perfection. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, we want to invite you to check out another one, See Yourself to See Others, which is right in line with what we're talking about. When we heal our wounds, we see ourselves as worthy we can truly see others instead of just being triggered by them or nurtured by them and seeing what they can do for us. It's a beautiful video. Check it out. And remember to keep shining. We need your light. We do. We really do. Shiny, shiny.